Hello, Cronny. This is Micah, or Chess Teacher Tui, and I thought I would break my long video uh, hiatus by showing you this very famous endgame study by the master Richard Reddy. He was one of the great uh, hypermodernist masters of the 1920s, and they really changed the way that we think about chess. Now, in this position, uh, Black has just moved pawn to h5. And in this position, Richard Reddy famously says, white to move and draw. And in this position, it seems utterly impossible that that should be the case, because it seems like black should easily be able to catch white's pawn, while white's king seems to not have any chance in the world of catching black's pawn. But as a matter of fact, this game is actually a draw. And the reason why this game is actually a draw is through the subtle maneuvering of the king, black cannot simultaneously capture white's pawn and promote his own pawn. And it's really, it's really an amazing understanding of board dynamics. And the reason why it's an amazing thing for board dynamics is that in the number of turns it will take for the black king to capture white's pawn, as you'll notice it would take one, two turns at least, to capture White's pawn, in that same number of turns, White's king, uh, with two turns, can theoretically uh, get close enough to, uh, and technically since it's White to move, so White actually has three turns, so one, two, and three, and if that were to happen, that were to take place, from this position, uh, the White king is actually in the square. If you look at the famous endgame uh, concept of the square, you would see, because if you make a square that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you go 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, it would make this square on the screen. So if the king can get to this square at a certain time, uh, particularly if the king can get to the square, so even if, for example, say the pawn goes here first, as long as the king can get into the square can get into this four squares in a certain amount of time, then he will be able to capture the pawn, or at least be able to promote his own pawn. So let's look at some variations for how this potentially can go. So the first move that white has to make is king g7. Now a couple of things can happen here. Uh, at this point, uh, black can play uh, h4, or the king can step over and move to take the pawn. Either way, uh, it's still a draw for uh, it's still a draw for white. So at this point, the king goes to f6, and now uh, basically black has another choice. If uh, he pushes, then uh, once again. Uh, White has to, white goes to e5, and now this is the crucial moment of this particular choice, because if black takes the pawn in this position, then white gets over to f4, and he will capture the pawn. Move, 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 and draw. But if we go back, that's not the only way in which this can go. So let's say he comes over and then the pawn comes down. And in this case, rather than moving to take the pawn, black just continues to push his pawn. But at this position, white now has an altogether different strategy. At this point, he knows he's not going to be able to catch the pawn, so he moves up. And by this point, black sees the danger. Maybe he comes over, and white defends his pawn. And even though black will queen, White will queen also, and the game likewise will be a draw. And there are other ways this can go as well. So if we go back to the initial position. In this position, uh, he can just move to, move to start queening directly. And if he queens, white queens, and it will draw. If the black king then goes to try to intercept, 
then the king defends the pawn, and once again, white draws. This is a really incredible endgame study, and it shows the amazing use of space and how, because in this position, because the king can simultaneously move toward that h-pawn, but also move towards his own pawn, and because of the short distance that the c-pawn has to promote and can promote just one move after the black pawn can promote, uh, this game is actually a technical draw, assuming that white plays correctly. So this is one of those amazing, amazing endgame studies that really shows kind of the nature of space and how uh, space can be used over the chessboard. It's really a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous uh, endgame study. So anyway, this is uh, the Richard Reddy study, and it's one of the most famous chess puzzles in the entire history of the game. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it, and I will see you later.